Okay, math nine. Math nine, uh, the last section that you did uh, was rotations. So I'm gonna go over quite a few of those questions, I think, because quite a few of them asked you to draw. And again, the answers are not at the back of the book for the ones that ask you to draw. So I wanna go over those. Um, and then we'll go over section 8.4. 8.4 tends to be a little easier than 8.3, yay. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about a test yet. I'm not sure, I don't remember because I'm like that. Um, so I'm saying a test on Tuesday, May the 5th. Tuesday, May the 5th. So if that works for you guys, if you don't have a million other things due that day, um, again, I'm saying May the 5th, Tuesday morning, 8.30. So we have some new guys in the class. So hi, Joshua. Hi, Danny. Um, so how I run a test for math is you're kind of on the honor system. Um, but really, if you use your textbook, it's not the end of the world. Um, at 8.30 in the morning, I will upload a test. I will be available on Google Hangouts or Google Classroom, wherever you want to contact me, to answer any questions that you have as you do the test. Um, and you have an hour to do the test, actually a little more, because we usually start it at 8.30 and it goes until about 9.40, 9.45. Um, so you have until then to answer the questions and upload your answers to me in Google Classroom. I then mark it and I explain uh, what you did wrong in every question. So if, if in number seven you reflected it in the wrong axis or something, that's what I would tell you. Um, and I tell you what your mark on that test is. Um, so again, that'll be Tuesday, May the 5th. Now, new guys, I realize that you haven't been here for the whole chapter. You can go back and watch the videos and I encourage you to go back and watch the videos for the sections that you missed, 8.1, 8.2, and possibly 8.3. Um, try the test. It's not the end of the world if you don't do well on it. It's not going on any permanent record anywhere for you. Um, so don't like, I'm not going to count the whole test for you anyway. Um, but it'll just give you and me kind of an idea of what do I know? What do I not know? So it will be a good indicator for you what they're like. It'll also give you a chance to see what my tests kind of look like because every teacher does tests slightly differently. They all have their own kind of look to them. So again, I will say it one more time because you know me, I repeat things many times so you can't say you didn't hear me. Um, on Tuesday, May the 5th, 8.30 in the morning, you will log in. I will be there checking to be sure everybody's there. You will upload the test. You will write the test, upload it back to me, and within a day or two usually I mark it and let you know how you did all right so that's how we run a test in math it's a whole new experience for all of us so we're just adjusting as we can and being as flexible as we can be so that being said let's look at your homework on page 307 and we're gonna go through these one by one. Um, anything that required graphing, I will go over. At this point in the day when I am recording things, no one has said, can you go over number seven or can you go over number 20 yet? So um, if you have a question and I don't go over that one, just let me know and I will either talk to you privately or I'll do a video explaining it if I find a lot of people struggled with it. Um, so let me just go through number one, three, and five. None of those required you to draw anything. You just had to say, was it 90 degrees clockwise? Was it 270 degrees counterclockwise? 
what way did they turn those flags? Um, let me see, number 11 said, draw the image of the figure after a 90 degrees clockwise rotation from the origin. So in that one, all they mean by the origin is if they just basically turn the whole graph. So in number 11, um, it's, and I'm just gonna give a basic shape to it. It's over two squares, up one, down one, back two squares, up one, down one. Poor guy, you okay? So, oh, if you're new, I have a pile of dogs, like six. So if you hear coughing, which I don't know why you're coughing, but if you hear coughing, barking, you hear barking a lot, I apologize in advance. I have six small barky dogs and I'm working from home. So it happens. Um, they show up in the videos every once in a while too. So maybe one will show up before the end of this. I don't know. I've got two sitting at my feet right now, but they're laying really quietly so I don't want to disturb them. So this is what it looks like currently. So if we turn it 90 degrees clockwise, what that really means is we take it and we turn it a quarter of a turn this way. So this point is going to move to be up here. Uh, this point is going to move to be up here. This point is going to move to be here. And this point is going to move to be, well, actually kind of down a little bit. So it will actually be here. So instead of going over two and up one, you would go over one and up two. All right. So it's just a 90 degrees clockwise rotation. Where did my, there is my clock. Okay. So I'll actually label points maybe on the next one. Stop with it later. Um, number 14. Oh, that one looks like fun. Number 14. Same instructions. Um, but this time, let me see. There's a point at zero and zero. There's a point or a corner at, I don't know what it is, negative one and zero. They went back one square. Um, and then they go up to negative one and one. And then they go, what was that about? And then they go over, whoops, let me just, this point is negative one and one. They go over here to be at negative two and one, and then they go up to be at negative two and two. And then it goes all the way back here to be at zero and two. And so we have this shape, okay? So if I rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, and like I said in the video, I actually struggle with this. I'm gonna put it on a separate graph just because um, I think it will be clearer. If I actually take this and rotate it 90 degrees, um, I'm looking. Oh, speaking of dogs barking, there's one. Enough. No, seriously. Enough. And that's my crazy dog, the one that you heard that didn't sound like a bark. <laughs> She's a little nut. Yeah, that one. She's a little nuts. We're not sure what's wrong with her. Um, so if you struggle with it, I would actually draw it. So it looks something like that. If I rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, now it's gonna look like that. So the new points, so it's gonna look something like that. It's not a good drawing, I know. Um, but I'm still gonna have a point at zero and zero, um, but I'm going to have a point at one and zero. So this point right here moved to here, one and zero. So notice what happened. Um, this changed signs, all right? 
Um, this point moved instead of to being negative one and one, moved to be at one and one. This one moved to be at one and two. And it used to be, thank you, it used to be at negative two and one. Just a second. Calm. Here's one. He's not calm. Um, so actually what happened is these two points switched places and this changed signs. So that's what happened there. Hello. I think I have that right. Let me see. Yeah, I think so. So anyway, you can kind of see what's happening here. Um, so I would be looking for you to have those in the correct positions. This is now going to be 2 and 0. It used to be here at 0 and 2, but it moved down here 90 degrees to be at 2 and 0. Things are flipping spaces. Oh, this one I have wrong. Were you yelling at me over the screen? You should have been. That should actually be 0 and 1. You should have been yelling at me over YouTube um, because that was wrong. 0 and 1. So, um, these are flipping spaces and the sign is changing. Um, and you just kind of have to, th there's no, like, it's always this way. When you rotate 90 degrees, this always happens because it depends on where it starts and where it's going to stop. So you kind of have to figure it out as you go. Again, it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, and it's, it's uh, I have to think a lot harder doing these than I do for some other things. Um, all right, so that was number 14. I lost my book, where'd I put it? Oh, here. If you're new watching these videos and you notice I'm kind of scatterbrained, <laughs> my kids are used to that um, because I am kind of scatterbrained, I guess. Maybe I'm just I don't know. I'm just not a real organized person. I, organization is my weak point. I, I work on it, but it is my weak thing. So we did number 14. Number 15 is a rectangle. And the rectangle looks like goes over to up to... Oh, and yeah, it kind of looks like that. And they want us to do a 180 degree clockwise rotation from the origin. Can I tell you that it doesn't really matter that they said clockwise? 180 degrees, doesn't matter which way you go. Again, think of it this way. If, I, if I'm facing this whiteboard and I turn 180 degrees, I end up looking at you. Or if I go counterclockwise, 180 degrees, I still end up looking at you. 180 degrees, doesn't matter the direction you go, you're gonna end up in the same place. So if I just turn this 180 degrees, again, if you struggle with it, take your textbook and turn it. It works. Um, so instead of going up to, I'm gonna go down to, so they're gonna go back for, so it's actually just gonna be here. That's what it's going to look like. I find the 180 degree rotations actually easier than the 90 ones. The 90 ones, I have to think about more. Um, can I tell you that statistically, and again, this is a generalization, it's not true all the time, but statistically, guys are better at doing this in their heads than girls are. Don't know why, it's just for whatever reason, that seems to be a strength in the math department for guys, and it seems to be something that more girls struggle with. Um, girls, we excel in other areas, and some girls are really good at it, but in general, that seems to be, it's called spatial relations. I am terrible at them. I am the typical generalization of a girl, and I'm awful at it. Um, great at other parts of math, for whatever reason, I just find that hard. Um, and 
let's see, 15, 17, oh, same type of thing. Um, another one of those funky shapes, this time it's going this way, this time it's going this way. So we're gonna do 180 degrees. So again, I can go back to the photo I drew, if I can find it. I can go back to that photo that I drew because it's pretty much the same picture. Um, it's kind of the same picture, but not. Okay, so let me, don't look at that one. Look at this one. So it's this one, right? So it's this one. I know it's badly drawn. Laugh at me, it's okay. I can take it. So if I go 180 degrees, thump, it's now over here. Okay, it's now over here. And for whatever reason, that helps me. If it helps you, use it, like do that. What difference does it make? Do what helps you. It doesn't matter whether the person beside you has to do that or not. If you do, do it. I've been teaching this for how long? I have things that help me. And if I know it helps me, I'm not embarrassed to do it. All right. Um, that was 17, 20. Yep, 20 says, we have a triangle and point A is at one and zero. So that means I go across one and up none. So that's right here. This is point A at one and zero. Point B is at three and four. So that means I go across three, one, two, three, and up four, one, two, three, four. So three and four. And again, if you're doing this on graph paper, you don't have to put that it's three and four because I can count the squares, but you do have to put that that is point B. If you're doing what I'm doing and doing it just on a blank piece of paper, then you actually need to label so that I can see whether where you put it is a reasonable place. If you put it down here and you tell me that that is three and four, that's not right. Like that's not the right place. So that's why we label it. Um, point C is three and zero. So across three and up none. That is point C. So here's my triangle when I play connect the dots. There's my triangle. Now they want us to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. So again, we're just gonna rotate this whole thing 90 degrees clockwise. So um, this point A is gonna come down here and it's gonna be at zero and negative one. Again, what happened was these flipped places and this switched signs. It went from being a positive one to being a negative one. This is going to come down here and it's going to end up being at zero and negative three. Again, switched signs, okay? Switch signs on the three and they flipped places. This is going to come down here and it's actually gonna be here. It's going to be at four and negative three. So it should probably be over a little bit. I probably put that not quite in the right place. Probably needs to be four. Let's put it out here four and negative three. Again, what happened? They switched places and um, this changed signs. This did not. So that the triangle looks like that. It shouldn't look bigger than this one, except that I can't draw. All right. Again, graph paper would solve that problem. I really, really recommend, especially if you are new to graphing, if graphing is not um, something that you've done a lot of, I would suggest you do it on graph paper. Remember, I've been doing it on a whiteboard for the last 20 years. So I'm, you know, even though I can't draw, I'm not half bad at that. Just a second. Okay, that's enough. Sorry if that just got really loud. If you're wearing headphones, I apologize. Um, I forgot about that. <laughs> 
24 did not require you to draw anything, so the answer's at the back of the book. Same thing for 25. That leaves us with 29 and 30. So 29 says you have a rectangle. And that rectangle has vertices at one and zero. So over one, up none. So that's point A. I feel like we've done this. Um, point B is one and two. So over one, up two. That's point B. Point C is at six and two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. 6 and 2, that's point C, and point D is going to be at 6 and 0, because they say it's a rectangle. So it should look something like this. Now, I had this question, let me answer it for you. Um, it says, draw the image of the rectangle after 180 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. Someone asked me, do I have to draw the original, the black one that I just drew on the graph? The answer is, based on me reading that, no. Because it just says draw the image after. I draw the original image to work off of. It helps me, so I do it. If you can do it without it, unless it says draw this image, then draw the, the rotation, you don't have to do both of them. It won't be so in a question on a test. If I say draw the rectangle, then draw the rectangle after 180 degree rotation, then yes, you have to draw both. But if I just say draw after the image has been rotated 180 degrees, then the only points that I'm giving you are for the rotated one. So it's all about reading the question. Very important, reading what it asks you. Do I draw both? I do, because it helps me. Did I have to? No. All right. So this one says 180 degrees counterclockwise. So that means I'm gonna turn it this way. Again, if you struggle with that, then um, draw the original and actually turn your paper and see where it ends up. Turns out this is going to end up at negative one and zero. This is going to end up at negative six and zero. This is going to end up at negative one and negative two. And that one is going to end up at negative six and negative two. So what happened? Everything changed sign. It didn't change place, but it did change sign. Everything changed signs, okay? Sorry, this is like the third video I've done today, so I'm getting kind of perched. All right. Um, and the last one, the last one. I don't know if you guys can hear the cracking and banging. It's really windy at my house today. I live in the middle of a big field um, and the wind is really bad and I record these way up in like basically my attic so you really can hear the wind. I don't know if you can over the video or not but it's really loud here. So are the dogs. Oh my goodness. Last one is 30. Uh, you have a parallelogram this time. It has has points, oh my soul, that's Autumn. She's very mouthy. Um, negative one and zero, so back one and up none. If she just go outside. Um, negative two and two, so back two and up two. Um, Six, and no, wait, sorry, looking at the wrong question. Negative six and two, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Apparently, I'm making this really big. And one, two. Wicked, stop. 
and negative 5 and 0, which is here, point D. So I have this parallelogram, okay? And they, and again, it did not say that I had to draw that original image. So on a test, I wouldn't be looking for this, but I'd be happy if I saw it because it would tell me that you were working through the problem. Um, and we're doing a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So we're turning it whoop, up here. So this point A is going to go 90 degrees to here, which is going to be 0 and 1. So this is A prime. Again, the original is A. The after is what's called A prime. It's got this little apostrophe up here, A prime. This is going to actually go up here to be at um, 0 and 5. This is D prime. So again, they flipped places and this switched signs. This is actually going to flip up to be over here. It's going to be at 2, 1, 2, and positive 6. So it's going to be up here at 2 and 6, and this is C prime. So again, they flipped places and the 6 changed signs. Same thing for B. Um, it's actually going to be here at 1, 2, and 1, 2. It's going to be at 2 and 2, that is B prime, so that my parallelogram is now here. I rotated it 90 degrees clockwise. So remember, clockwise is the way a clock goes, so that is to the right counterclockwise would be to the left. All right, so that's rotations. I'm always happy when we get through that section because it's just, it's just not my favorite one. All right. Going over the homework takes way longer than the new work. So here's the new work. The new work is not all that difficult, okay? We are going to do in section 8.4 something called dilatations is what they call it, dilatations. Dilatation sounds like a very fancy word, um, but all it means is, um, are you going to, you're gonna increase the size of it, or you're going to decrease the size of it. When you increase the size of it, you multiply all of your values by a number bigger than one. Okay, so if you want it two times bigger, that would be called an enlargement. So if you want something to get bigger, if you want the shape to get bigger, it's called an enlargement. If you want something to get smaller, if you want the shape to get smaller, then that is called a reduction. Makes sense, right? If you I don't know, if you get your grad photos done when you graduate, you get these little itty bitty proofs and then your parents go and they get them enlarged. You know, maybe they get them enlarged to an eight by 10 so they can put it on their wall. Maybe they get a poster size one because they just love you so much, right? But they enlarge it. But it would look really weird if they enlarged it like horizontally two times bigger and vertically six times bigger. Suddenly you'd be really distorted and you would not look right anymore. So it has to be that you do it by the same amount to everything. That simplifies a lot of stuff. To reduce it, you're still going to multiply, but you're gonna multiply it by a number between zero and one. So basically a fraction, like a half or a fourth or an eighth or three quarters or something like that. Um, this is going to look um, very similar to the mapping rule for translations. Um, so it could look like this. Um, shoot, I'm just looking at the example 3x and 3y. So what they're telling you is take the original points and multiply everything by 3. 
That means that that's going to be an enlargement and the shape is going to get three times bigger than it was. So um, in the example, I'm on page 310 of your text. Um, it says triangle ABC has these vertices. Um, and again, a vertice or a vertex is just a corner of a triangle or a square or whatever. Um, point A is one and two, so over one, up two. That's point A. And I'm gonna make it fairly small because I'm gonna make it bigger. Um, point B is at three and negative one. Oh, let me even go smaller with that because of where I'm headed, sorry. Again, if you're doing it on graph paper, you have the benefit of squares. So over one, up two. One and two, that's point A. Um, point B, one, two, three, and negative one. You'll see why I'm making it so small in a minute. Maybe some of you already can see it. And C is negative two and negative two. So one, two, one, two. That is point C. So when I connect the dots, badly, but when I connect the dots, I get this triangle. All right, so if I'm going to do what they've asked me to do, and again, because this number is bigger than one, I know it's an enlargement. I know it's gonna make it bigger. If it was say one and a half or 1.5, then it would get one and a half times bigger. If this number is a fraction or a decimal that is less than one, like 0.5 or 1 fourth, then you know the shape should get smaller. So what I would do is I would just take all of my numbers, all of them, and multiply them by three. So for point A, so for point A, one times three is three, and two times three is six. So my new A point is going to be three, one, two, three, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is my A prime. It is my A after I have done what they told me to do with it. So B prime, again, I'm gonna multiply it. Three times three is nine, and negative one times three is negative three. So that's why I was making this small because now I have to go forward nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three. That is B prime. And C prime, I would take the negative two and multiply it by three, which would give me negative six, and I'd take the negative two, I'd multiply it by three and I would get negative six. So I'm gonna go back six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna go down six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so that is my C prime. So here we go. We have a triangle that is three times bigger. All right, so this section I find is a little easier than rotations. Maybe you won't, but I do. I find this section a little bit easier. So I will give you some questions to do on that. Um, and then we really only have one more section after that. We have section 8.5. So we'll do that on Thursday. On Friday, I will review and maybe give you some review questions to try. And then Monday will just be a study day and Tuesday, 8.30 in the morning, we will do a test. So you just log on by 8.30, no sleeping in that morning. Um, by 8.30, you log in. The test will upload at 8.30. I'll probably schedule it for 8.28 because it seems to take a minute or two to do its thing. Um, so it's up there by 8.30, and then you will have until 9.40 to finish the test and upload it to me, all right? So that is what the next few days is going to look like. Uh, you guys are doing a great job with this. I know this is all different and strange and weird, and you guys are doing a really great job with the really weird and strange. So that's good. Um, keep communicating with me. Please let me know if you are struggling. Um, to be honest, I keep bragging about you guys because you guys are really doing really well with this. 
Um, so just keep that up. Um, I'm having to nag some of my older ones more than I have to nag you guys. And some of you are doing your homework more consistently this way than you did when we were in school. I find that interesting. Anyway, have a good day and I will see you tomorrow.